So using this test, uh, this ratio test, uh, making sure that we include that limit as n approaches infinity, we can test for when a series converges or diverges, uh, and and we can test, you know, for what values of x will it converge or diverge to. So let's let's do a couple more examples of those. Um, here we have the series, the Maclaurin series for e to the x. It looks familiar to you, and we want to know um, the interval of convergence for the power series. So over what values of x will it converge? And and we use the idea, we're, we're going to use that ratio test. So we say, you know, we want to know the limit as n approaches infinity of a to the, or a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, absolute value. And we want to know, you know, when is this less than 1? So we, we evaluate, we say the limit as n approaches infinity of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial, that's a sub n plus 1, divided by x to the n over n factorial. Now we simplify. So ideally you work through problems just vertically that you don't work across horizontally, but for uh, saving some space, I'm going to do a math faux pas, forgive me. So simplifying using what we know about uh, exponent rules and factorials, we could rewrite this as um, x times x to the n over n plus 1 times n factorial all over x to the n n factorial. And we see that x to the n cancels off, n factorial cancels off, and we're left with the limit of, or the limit as n approaches infinity, the absolute value of x over n plus 1. So then what we look for is, you know, what, what will this limit be? And, and we want to see when is it less than 0, of course. Well, this limit, as n approaches infinity, um, you know, we have an n on the bottom, no n's up top. This is going to equal 0, and 0 is less than 1. So because our limit of, as n approaches invi infinity of my n plus 1th term over my nth term, because that limit is less than 1, that proves that we're not accumulating anything uh, as n gets huge. Because it's not accumulating anything, we can prove that this converges. And because it's not dependent on x, it converges for all x. Let's do another example. Now, be patient. Don't, don't rush. Just because we've seen a bunch of examples of this, um, it's, it's kind of easy to watch harder to do. So I encourage you to pause this video. See if you can do this on your own. Once you've taken a stab at it, press unpause uh, and then check your work with me. And I'll, uh, I'll when I say check your work with me, I, I mean check your work with the video, of course. So pause it, give it a try. Okay, so here we go. Um, to see whether or not this converges or the interval for convergence, I'm going to say the limit as n approaches infinity of my n plus n plus 1 term, so x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus 1 times 2 to the n plus 1 all over, all over x to the n over n plus 1 times 2 to the n. Now, this starts getting a little bit ugly, um, but let's work through it. So the limit as n approaches infinity, looking at my numerator, that's x to the, or x times, x times x to the nth, because that's x to the n plus 1, over n plus 2 times 2 to the n times 2, and then I'm going to write the denominator as a multiplying by its reciprocal. So that's times n plus 1 times 2 to the n 
over x to the n. Okay, now let's do some simplifying. 2 to the n goes away, x to the n goes away, and we're left with the limit as n approaches infinity of x n plus 1 over n plus 2. And using L'Hopital's rule, uh, since we're, well, we're not really using L'Hopital's rule because we're not talking about, um, well, we're not really doing L'Hopital's rule right now. No, yes, we are. Sorry. <laughs> I had a brain fart. We can use L'Hopital's rule because uh, if we put n in, um, we get infinity over infinity, so we could take the derivative with respect to n. So this equals the limit as n approaches infinity of um, take the derivative of the top with respect to n, and you just left you're left with x n, and on the bottom you get one. Sorry, you get x times one over one, which just equals well that's independent of x. Let me take a step back. This we could write as the limit as n approaches infinity of xn plus x over n plus 2. Now let's, it's more clear that when we take the derivative of this with respect to n, we get left with x over 1. And that and that equals x, because there's no n terms in there. So that always equals x. So then for us to answer when does that converge, we need to know when does that value, when is that less than 1? Well, that's when x is between 1 and negative 1. So we just found the values of x for which um, this interesting series will converge. Apologies, though. Um, I made a mistake. I realized I forgot about 2. So hopefully some of you guys caught me there already and you did it right and you're thinking, wow, how did he make such a huge omission? So let's really quickly then, we get this is the limit as n approaches infinity, remembering the two this time, of x n plus 1 over 2 n plus 2, which equals the limit as n approaches infinity of xn plus x over 2n plus 2. And once again, all of this is in absolute values, so we can just throw those in there. Um, as n approaches infinity, this whole thing is infinity over infinity, so using L'Hopital's rule, we get the limit as n approaches infinity of x over 2. And, and then we say, okay, this needs to be less than 1. Well, the limit as n approaches infinity of x over 2 is just x over 2 because there's no n's in there. So we want to know when does absolute value of x over 2, when is that less than 1? Multiplying by 2, we get that's going to happen when x is between um, when x is between 2 and negative 2. Okay, that's right now. So really, um, three cases exist, uh, given our power series, and these were all power series. Given a power series uh, that is, you know, centered around C, three possibilities exist. One, it's going to converge everywhere. Two, it converges only when x equals C, uh, so just at that point. And three, uh, it's going to converge over some interval, and that interval is going to be... Um, if and only, it converges only if the absolute value of x minus c is less than r. And we don't know what's happening at the endpoints. So we only know what's, what's happening in between. So those are the three cases. One, the series converges for every value of x. Two, the series converges only when x equals c. Three, there's some number r um, such that the the series is going to converge um, for the absolute value of x minus c is less than r. Or 
written differently like that. So the point obviously is, is finding that value of r, which is what we've been doing using the ratio test. Okay, last last problem here. Uh, find the radius of convergence for this problem. Well, um, we're going to do the the exact same thing that we've been doing before. So we're going to look at the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 times x minus 3 to the n plus 1 all over 2 times x minus 3 to the n. Well, you should start becoming comfortable with this idea of, you know, rewriting this n plus 1. So that's 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 3 to the n all over 2 times x minus 3 to the n. Absolute value of. And then things nicely cross off. So the 2 crosses off, the x minus 3 to the n crosses off, and we get left with the limit as n approaches infinity of just absolute value of x minus 3. And we want to know when is that less than 1. Well, first of all, the limit as n approaches infinity of this just equals the absolute value of x minus 3 because no n's exist. Uh, and we want to know when is this less than 1. Well, that's less than 1 for the interval of x must be less than 4 and greater than 2. And there is our interval for convergence. But what is this interval for convergence? We keep finding it, um, and we found it a bunch of times, but just to, to give you a graphical depiction of what's going on, this is saying, remember, what we're trying to do um, is we're trying to take some function, we're trying to take some function and approximate that function with some polynomial. So we're trying to take some f of x and approximate it with a polynomial function of degree n. And the idea is um, that for certain values of x, so very clearly, you know, in here, for certain values of x, we're going to have an interval of convergence where that where that polynomial function actually works. So in this one, you know, the convergence graphically, it's it's happening between when x is between one and negative one. So for these values of x here, uh, what we're saying is that the polynomial function works. We can use it to approximate. For all other values, it doesn't work. That's the idea of um, looking for convergence. We're looking for convergence because we want to know when can we use the polynomial approximation. 